In this video, we are going to add some constraints and parameters to a dynamic block, and then we're going to use a block table to change the size of the block. To start with, I have this window block here. I'm going to go ahead and double click on it to get into the block editor. You can see that I previously added in some dimensional constraints to control the thickness of the window frame. What I want to do first is I want to automatically constrain these objects. So here on the block editor tab, in the geometric section, I'm going to choose auto constrain. And then I will just window around everything and press enter. I can see that it has now added in some coincident constraints for the endpoints. I can see some parallel, some collinear, some horizontals, etc. So now this block, when I select a line and grab a grip, you can see that it is going to stretch out instead of just stretching that one corner. I'll go ahead and undo that. Next, I wanna create a couple of parameters. So I'm going to come up top to my block editor tab and select parameters manager. Sometimes the parameters manager will not appear. I can actually see a little bit of change on my screen when I select it. So it's trying to open it, but it's docked and not appearing. Now what I found is the best thing to do if this happens to you is to turn off the parameters manager and then go ahead and close the block editor and save any changes. Then I will switch to the parametric tab and open the parameters manager here. Now usually I have found that it will go ahead and open up. In some cases it will appear docked at the top in my particular case, I'm running multiple monitors, so it actually appeared on another monitor. So I'll go ahead and drag that back over into the screen. Now I'll go ahead and double click on the block to get back into the block editor. And as you can see, it is open, but it's docked kind of weirdly up top here. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag it down into the screen here. So in my parameters manager, I can see the five parameters that were created when I added in these dimensional constraints earlier. Next, I am going to create a couple of named parameters. Now this window currently is 36 inches by 48 inches. So I'm going to create a couple of parameters with those values. I will choose my new parameter button here, and then I'll call this first one width. And then I will assign the value of 36. I'll go ahead and stretch these out a little bit so I can see this better. If I use these in formulas later, I will need to type them exactly as I've typed them here. So you'll notice that I typed in all caps. So I'll need to type it that way later if I use it in a formula. I'll go ahead and create another parameter here. And this time I will call it height and I will set it to a value of 48 inches. Now I'm going to add in some dimensional constraints here using those values. One of the things I wanna think about is the fact that I want this window to stretch from its origin point. So I want it to stretch to the right and up. So with that in mind, I wanna make sure that when I add my parameters, I use this base point first. So up on my block editor tab, I'm going to choose the linear dimensional parameter. And then once again, I wanna choose this origin point first, then the second point, then I'll click to place my dimension. It allows me to type in a value here. Instead of typing in a value, I am going to type in my parameter name of width. And I've now assigned this dimension, the width parameter. I'll do the same thing. Once again, starting at that bottom left corner and then going up. And then this time I will call it height. So before I do anything else, I wanna flex these parameters a little bit, make sure it works the way that I expect it to. So I'm gonna change the height to 60 and I can see that the window stretches out away from that point. I'll change the width maybe to 60 as well. And again, I can see that stretches properly. What's not working though is the window panes are not staying the same size. So I'm gonna go back to my 48 by 36 window here. And then I'm going to add in another parameter here that will take care of that. 
So I'll create another linear parameter and I'll start from the center point here and then I'll go up to the top point here. Then I'll click to place my dimension and this one is going to be a formula of height divided by two. So it should always stay half the size. So once again, I'll flex this just to make sure it works all right. Let's say that it went down to 24 inches. I can see that it stays centered. So once again, I'll bump that back up to 48. So now that I flexed it and I know that it's working correctly, I'm ready to go ahead and add in my block table. So back here on the block editor tab, I will select block table. Then I will click where I want the grip to appear. So I want it to be close to that origin point in the lower left corner. I'll go ahead and press enter to accept one as the number of grips in my command line. And that's going to open up my block properties table. So here I'll add in the fields that I wish to adjust. So I'll select add a property and I'll start with width. Then I'll add another property and I'll add in height. Then I can simply type in what the allowable values are for these two properties. So I'll just simply create a few different ones here, maybe a 36 inch by 36 inch, a 36 by 48, whoops, which is what we currently have already. Maybe a 36 by 60, 48 by 48, 48 by 60, maybe a 60 by 60. So once again, these values are going to be driving the width and height parameters for me. Before I click OK, I'm going to go ahead and choose the audit button here just to make sure that there are no errors. Looks good. And then I'm also going to specify that the block properties must match a row in the table. So we can't have any other size window except for the allowable values here. I'll go ahead and click OK, then close my block editor save my changes then let's check this window out so i now have the little drop down list you'll remember that i put width in the list first so when i click the drop down i first specify the width and then i have a fly out for the different height options as well notice that it always scales from that bottom left corner because of the direction that i added in my parameters That concludes this look at adding parameters and a block list table to a dynamic block in AutoCAD.